Hey guys, welcome to another video. I'm not sure if this is gonna be a vlog or not, but welcome to another video. I'm Taylor, if you already don't know, I do relocation content. Me and my family moved from America to Johannesburg, South Africa, and so I'm just documenting my everyday life for you guys. So um, today, not a, well, I said it wouldn't be a vlog, it could be kind of a vlog, but I think this is going to be a regular video. Um, what day is it? What day is it? It's the 1st of February, and it's Black History Month officially in America. So, happy Black History Month, everybody. My favorite month of the year. Today, I wanted to talk about a few things. One of them being how... Am I liking South Africa after being here for a month? If you don't know, we moved here December 6th. Um, we actually left America December 4th, but from all the traveling and then coming from Cape Town to Johannesburg, December 6th is when we got here. And so we officially hit a month, like several weeks ago, but we were pretty busy. I also just feel like we were kind of like in the rut of it. So it was kind of hard to explain about my first month, but I was still really kind of experiencing it. But now that we're moving into month two, literally in a few days, I felt like, okay, I should probably really give y'all how I'm liking it, how we've been adjusting, just the ins and outs of our first month here. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, first month here, just overall, if I could give one word, it would be grateful. And if I could give another word, I could say it is exhilarating. So, so far, it's been really, really exhilarating and fun. Um being here we have had some ups and downs don't get me started um we actually came here supposing we were supposed to move into a place the place wasn't ready it was not up to par so we ended up having to leave the keys and just go into an airbnb for a few weeks which was tumultuous it was really actually pretty crazy and so it was really crazy um at one point, we didn't have any water in the area, in the apartment that we were in. And the Airbnb host was acting as though this was like new news. But however, she sent me like a, some paperwork showing about the water outages in the area. And that paperwork was from back in October. And it said it was going to be happening until March of this year. So it was very crazy. We ended up having to move to another Airbnb which I really, really loved. We had a great time there. It was really nice. It's actually not far from where we live right now. It's probably like three minutes up the road from where we live. So um, it ended up working out in that sense. It ended up working out in that sense. Really our first month to me, it was exciting. It, we were grateful, but it was trying. And so I'm here to tell you guys from my actual personal experience that moving somewhere, even though, even if all your ducks are in a row, it can still be extremely, extremely stressful and um, extremely trying. So yeah, moving to a new country, even if you have all your ducks in a row, even if you have the best mindset, even if everything is supposed to go perfect, believe me y'all, it's not. And I feel like I'm not the first person on the internet to tell y'all it's not going to go as smooth as you want it to go. But I do feel as though that is a part of the growing pains. We are literally moving from one country to the next. This is not a intercontinental move. We are actually moving outside the United States. And so I don't know why I thought this was going to be easy. Maybe it's just because that's how much I believe in us. But I really thought we had like marked off all the boxes guys however when we got here there was so much to learn which i already thought was going to happen and i knew we were going to have to adjust and i knew there were things that were going to be different but i didn't expect it to set us back as much as it set us back and so and so um it was a really trying month though we had a lot of fun as you can see in a lot of my videos Behind the scenes, there was a lot of logistics, planning, budgeting, figuring out what we needed to do to get steady because there was actually a lot of stuff that I didn't know that we needed to do before we get, got here or that there was just not, I wouldn't say that I didn't know, is that the information was just not on the internet. So there was nothing I could do. And then there were some things that 
you just could not do until you got here. And that really put a hamper on things, like such as getting a bank account. You cannot get a bank account unless you are here. You do need an address. So that was that was a time by itself. That was a very tedious process. Getting the getting a bank account here as a foreign national and on a visa is not as easy as you would think. In America, it's pretty simple to get a bank account. It doesn't take very long. You might be in there at most for an hour, at most. I really don't see that happening. The last time I got a bank account in America, I think we were in there for like 30 minutes. But here, y'all, we were in there for hours, 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 hours. And that was not the first time we were there for hours. And it just was a lot of red tape, I could say. Like certain things you couldn't have, certain things we couldn't do, certain things we needed to provide. Um, and don't get me wrong, being able to be, having to be able to provide bank statements, that's fine. But it was like a lot of limitations that are placed on this just because we're visa holders and we don't have residency, which goes into my point of, I do believe personally that residency will help you be able to assimilate into South Africa much easier than just being on a visa. So if you really want to be here and you're coming here on a retiree visa, I think it's really important that you work towards getting that residency as soon as possible because it will open a lot more doors, especially if you have younger children. If you are just on your passport visa, then you will need to apply for a study visa for your children if they have to go to actual school. So those are just a little, a little bit of things that we've realized. But however, like I was saying, getting a bank account not easy not easy at all really a zero out of ten experience anything that could be blocking you is blocking you and it just felt like you know something as simple as a bank account just was not a simple process and that kind of tiptoed us into kind of the land of red tape and bureaucracy things that were going on when we were moving here and it kind of set the tone for kind of like putting you into a, rea into a reality check that is not gonna go as smooth as you think. So we finally got the bank account. We have the bank account, but I will tell you guys, it is not a fun, it's not a quick process. You definitely need to put time aside to do it. And by time aside, I truly think you should probably put like one to three days aside. It may just take a day, it may not. Heed my warning. So we have to do that. Here you have to get a, um, is it called a television license? a television license we don't have nothing like that in america you could buy a tv and have a tv like there's nothing you don't have to pay anything you don't have to sign up for something but here we are going to go get a tv something simple again we're like oh we want to watch some tv we want to get into some shows okay so let's go get a tv so we get our we get our tv we end up getting the samsung crystal um really nice tv but you need a TV license. Luckily, we were not uneducated and we actually signed up for that TV license maybe the day of or the day before. But you need to have that information because if you don't, I think you can get fined. I'm not sure what the repercussions are, but you're breaking the law. So coming from America, I know that sounds really crazy, but you need a TV license. So you would just go on the internet, look it up, and then you apply for it. It was how much about? Mm. How much do you remember it being about the TV license? Yeah, somewhere between 100 and 150 rand, nothing crazy. So don't sit here and be like, oh my God, I need a TV license, it's gonna cost me hundreds of dollars. It didn't. Um, for an American, 100 to 150 rand, anywhere between five to like seven dollars. Nothing crazy, but you do need that. And I guarantee you, when you go to get this TV, boy, they are not letting you check out without your proof of that license. So that was something else we learned while we were here. Um, that wasn't, that didn't make the process difficult, but it was kind of a little bit shocking. However, some of the difficulty <laughs> that we've been experiencing is just been like with the simple things, like trying to figure out our banking situation, the mobile banking, virtual cards. Like, I don't know, I don't, I don't have many bank accounts in America, but I've never used a virtual card before. So it was a, a learning curve for me. Um, also, trying to figure out how we transfer our money from America to here because some banks put like a limit on how much you could transfer and we were needing to transfer much more than that limit and a limit for a month is what i'm saying like they have like a fifty thousand rand limit and we needed to transfer more than that and so 
that was something we had to overcome. Luckily, because he is a veteran, we were able to go through the VA to have them actually just deposit it directly into our account. Because the next hurdle that we were experiencing was, okay, we have all this money in our, our bank account in America. We need to be able to withdraw this money. But if you're sitting here withdrawing, you have to withdraw at the ATM and then deposit it. So we're withdrawing all this money and depositing it. But then there's bank limits for how much you can withdraw from Chase a day. And we go ahead and try to get it raised, but they can only raise it so much. Then you get charged banking fees for removing it from a bank internationally, not to mention um, the fees for using a completely different bank. Obviously, there's no chase here. So that was something that was actually a headache because we were having to do that almost every couple days until we removed all of our money out of the account. Um, hindsight, what would I have done differently? You can't get a bank account before you get here, but maybe I would say like... Um, maybe just have the money in cash. I just, that feels just really unsafe to me, but that would be like probably the only other way you could go about it is having the money not on your banking um, app or you know your bank account in America. So that was kind of annoying that we had to do that. We had to do that for a while because we have to, we had to go ahead and update the VA that we were leaving, that we were using a different bank account and that wasn't gonna take place until this month. So we're, we're in February now and now officially our money gets deposited directly to us. Um, so for two months, we were doing this bank heist, basically looking like we are scammers, scammer boy and scammer girl. We were just taking out so much money, putting it back in, and but then we're being charged all of these bank fees through Chase. So that was literally terrible. Then the next thing was coming here was trying to figure out like switching over like for your SIM card. And you would think that would be an easy thing, but actually, like, it was not as easy as you would think. Now, you could just find a phone company, whatever, and you could pick what you want, but it was like getting my phone to register the SIM card and still be functional with, for, like, people in America to contact me. I thought that if we just, like, switched the SIM card, you know, to this SIM card, that wouldn't be an issue, but there was issues. I wasn't getting my, um, I wasn't getting text messages. My text messages weren't sending to some people in America. It was very interesting, so... I wasn't really prepared for that. I knew that we were gonna have Verizon anymore, so that wasn't the issue. The issue just was like, I wasn't planning to experience issues with just cellular phones. And that took me by surprise. It wasn't bad though, because actually, since I have an iPhone, we just went next door to Apple and they've pretty much got that squared away. Um, luckily, they do have like iStore here and it is an authorized retailer of Apple. So if you guys break your phone, if you do any of those things, they could still uphold your warranty. The only difference that they said is that they may have to take your phone and send it off for a few weeks. So you may want to have like another burner phone or something if that were to happen. However, the phone situation, that was annoying because like, think about it. If all your cards and all of your accounts are linked to this phone number from the country you're coming from, Imagine when you're trying to change information like passwords, addresses, and stuff. They're sending codes, verification codes, to your old number. So I would try to reactivate my number and the codes would not be coming. So that was annoying. That was annoying. And um, so, yeah, that was pretty annoying. And so first month, like I was saying, um, trying. Those are, and that's another word I would say it was. It's trying. It's a lot of growing pains because you're in a new place and you're trying to learn their day to day. You're trying to learn how their systems work. And it's not as easy as you would think to find out how certain systems work. Sometimes you just have to fail to figure out how systems work. And that's kind of hard for me is to fail, especially when we have our kids behind us. I don't like that feeling of just not knowing and not being able to just do things like bam, bam, bam. So I would say that this month has been a season of growing and learning to try to let go and just go with the flow and go with the process, which was the purpose of actually moving, was to be able to ground myself and ground our family more. But I'm telling you, like after doing such a big move like that, that is not something that you want to hear. That something is trying, but it is. And you probably can't avoid it, guys. Secondly, I think I talked about this before, like we have to we have to rent a car until we get our residency, preferably for us. We're not gonna pay like down cash for a car and get like a cheap beat up car. That's kind of crazy to me. But if you were to buy a car, it's not that you can't buy one. It's that um, it's not that you can't buy a car. It's that 
if you're going to get a car and you're on a visa, they are going to go, if they're going to finance to you, if they're going to, because they may not even finance to you, you can't do a lot of things, like I said, off of this visa. So if they're going to finance to you, they're only going to finance to you for the term of your visa. And your visa takes place, like becomes active from the time that you apply. So for us, we applied in July. We moved here in December. You could already see we've lost like five months. And obviously we weren't buying a car the first day that we came here. So now we're already down a couple more months. So think about how condensed your payment would be. And you're already trying to save money and things. So why would I go and buy the car that we want and try to condense these payments into less than three years? You're going to be paying an arm and a leg. So for us, the solution to that was to just get a rental car. And so we have that um, rental car out there. You guys want me to do a rental car tour? I need to clean it first. It needs to be cleaned. But it's not, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of the Sherry Tigo, Sherry Tigo 7 Pro. I'm not a fan of the brand. I don't like the car. So if y'all just want to know my overview, I don't like it. But that is, I will say that we are grateful that we were able to get it because another thing that we were worried about was getting our bags from point A to point B because we had such large bags and a lot of the cars here are actually smaller and not as big. So we got lucky for that. So I am grateful. And that's where the grateful word comes in. I'm grateful for a lot of the things because things did work out, but it was like we had to we had to fight and crawl through the weeds. You would have to fight and crawl through the weeds to emerge and find victory. So um, yeah, now we're renting a car. We are renting from December to March and then we'll renew, but we're gonna get a different car. Um, so that was something that kind of set things back not really but kind of you know in a sense like how i explained um what else um this month this month not just bad a lot of good we saw and did a lot of fun things that we had never been able to do we did game tours we did um city bus tours we i mean we go to museums art galleries but we were able to do that we were able to travel around to the other cities that maybe we weren't able to see as much back in May when we came. And so it helped us decide like, you know, is this maybe the area that we want to stay in for sure? Do we want to go somewhere else? Are we willing to go somewhere else outside of Johannesburg? Um, being here definitely makes you feel as though, okay, I can start planning my life now, especially if you're trying to live here forever. So getting here, it was like, okay, we want to get we want to get stable. We want to lay our foundation. We want to do all these things. We're go-getters. We want to do all this. But, like, life was like, girl, slow it down. Slow it down. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Every time we thought we were on the pace to do something, life was like, slow down. I actually have something planned for you. And I'm going to take you on the whirly twirly roller coaster to get to that place. But you're going to get to the place regardless. So what I can say about this last month, our first month was... Things that should have been easy were not easy. It's like we took the hard road, not purposefully, but that was just the road we had to take. But we did get to where we needed to go. So um, I love this. I love the city, though. I really do love the country. Um, it's been good. I'm personally not complaining as much as somebody may complain because I'm actually happy I'm here. I'm very happy I'm here. So I don't like to get it misconstrued. I'm very grateful and happy that we came here, but boy, am I tired. Literally, it just feels like nothing is working out the way we want it to. But I think that is about the process of letting go and going with the flow and also assimilating and knowing that this was not no simple move from Georgia to Florida, from California to Nevada. This was a really big move. And I think that maybe sometimes I have a way of simplifying such large things and then I upset myself with those expectations that I have. And so I put these expectations that this was going to be a smooth process. Girl, ain't nobody told me it was going to be smooth. I told myself that. And so I let myself down when I could have just gone into this knowing that change is going to happen, that it might get a little rough, but it will be okay because we planned for that. So at one point, we had to have a come to Jesus moment and just be like, all right, it is what it is. It is what it is. It is what it is. And we have a roof over our heads. We have a place that we like. We have the car that we need um, or that we needed. The kids are in school. We get to do all this fun stuff like, why are you upset? Why are you mad? Yeah, things are not as you know them to be from when you were back home. But that doesn't mean that it's absolutely terrible. There's so many good things that are happening. And so... 
I can say to say, you just have to stay the course. This month has been a season of just staying the course and getting a lot of groundkeeping, housekeeping things done. Like for instance, when we moved in, our landlord was essentially kind of just saying that he was just gonna leave the appliances because he was moving and he was like, I mean, it's up to you if you want them or not, just let me know. If you don't, we'll, do, we'll take them. If you do, we can keep them. And so yeah, we're like, yeah, for sure, because we just spent all this extra money to come here after our other place didn't work out. So yeah, like that would be that would be helpful. Y'all, why like two weeks later, this man gonna talk about, so did you find appliances? And I'm like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You said we could have them. He's like, oh no, I definitely need those appliances because I need them for my um, my house because we just been eating out all day. I'm like, so why would you say the things that you're saying? So basically, we have all this money, but we're having to spend it on things that Initially, we thought we were going to have to, no, initially in our old place, the first place also wasn't supposed to come with them, and it didn't. Like, it was verified. I know now that typically unfurnished means, like, not furnished, but, like, literally we have the messages from the person saying that it was coming with it, and it didn't. And then we come here, and he says the same thing, and it didn't. So imagine, our, to our surprise, we need to now get important things like a refrigerator, and we needed to get a washer, and we have to eat a microwave. And here, and don't get me wrong, this is not, like, the microwave wasn't that much, but other things do cost money on top of us getting, like, our TV. We had to get our, a couch that we're actually going to be replacing. We had to do all these different things and so just things just felt like it was just compounding things that we tried to avoid to plan for we tried to be tactful we tried to be mindful we tried to do all the fulls and it just was like the universe was like girl no so that ended up happening we had to spend a lot of money on getting housekeeping things but now we have these things and we don't have to get them again so uh, like again a double-edged sword in in the midst of it it's turmoil but in the end where we are now i'm very thankful that we have our own stuff because if we move we could just take it with us you feel me so i would say like a lot of this process has been like that it's been a gift that gives after putting you through hell and then you're like oh okay well that's good then i guess that's, that's not too bad but in the midst of it you're like oh my gosh this is literally terrible this is not what i planned for look at the budget, look, or look at the plan, look at this, look at that, look at this, look at that. And, you know, it works out. So now we have the appliances we need. We still need to get a, um, a dishwasher. I don't know if we'll get a washer, I mean, a dryer, only because, like, our washing machine has a spin cycle that nearly dries the clothes, and then we just air dry them. Because actually a lot of my clothes are delicate, and they do need to be air dried anyway. So it doesn't really matter for us to have a dryer at this point. Maybe that might change, but right now we're pretty okay with not having one. But yeah, this month has just been, it's been good. It's been an adjustment culturally. So like we are black in the essence, but the culture is absolutely different. And so I already talked about that in a few other videos, but like it really does set in that, yeah, we are different and that's cool that we have differences, but um, I don't know if I thought it was gonna be a little different um, in the sense that even though y'all speak English here, it's not the English that I be speaking, if that makes sense. I still have loss in communication things happening, like communication issues all the time. And that's just because y'all are using different words than what I use. My accent might be hard to understand. Um, my culture is different as well. So that's playing into part of the linguistics. So adjusting, yeah, guys, I always want you to know just because, you know, South Africa, they speak English, and you still might have some difficulty um, engaging in truly deep meaningful conversation because we're trying to cover the bases like oh this word means that word this mean you say this word this way or i really can't understand like what you're saying because of each other's accents and so that has been an adjustment just because like i was under the impression i guess like because and i don't know why i was under the impression because it wasn't like i was it wasn't like i wasn't here but i guess you know you're here and you're just really happy but like yeah it's not like it's not like talking to an American. So the way that we're talking, y'all probably don't even understand half the things I'm saying, especially when I'm not making a video and I'm not enunciating the way I'm supposed to be enunciating. I know y'all can't understand. My husband's from the country. I know y'all can't understand. So and I understand that. So that has been funny because we'll be saying simple things like, can I have the check, please? And the waiter will look at us like, you want the who? I'm like the check and they're like 
and they're like, oh, the bill. And I'm like, well, if you were to say in America, can I have the bill? We know that you meant the check also. So it was just like little things because like they really be looking at us like, girl, I don't, what check? We don't have no check for you. We don't have not one check for you. And so that's just like a funny little like little banter that I noticed that we get into is that like we're, we're trying to figure out the words to use that you guys culturally use here. And that means like, and I just mean across the board in South Africa, just like in the UK or in Australia, we have different words. We have words that are being used in our languages, but we're using them differently, if that makes sense. What was the other one? What's the thing for the napkins? What is that called? Um, towelettes? No. Not that one. It's not towelettes. Dang, I can't remember. But there was something with napkins, and I was like, they were like, I was like, can I have a napkin? And and I don't know, y'all could have been just playing with me, but she was looking at me very, very much crazy. Because then, yeah, because a napkin here is a nappy, which is a diaper, but we call them a diaper. Like, you see, it's just like a roundabout way. So another thing was just realizing, yes, we speak the same language, but cultural differences make it a little bit difficult. Obviously, as we've been here for two months, is we've caught on. Like, I've caught on to the things that are being said. Of course, there's new things that are going to happen, but and be said to me that I may not understand. And of course, I'll just ask, but it, like... It's just something as simple as that. And so don't come here just with this this really just, um, what would you say, like this thinking it, it's going to be like coming to Atlanta. It is not like coming to Atlanta. Now, I said it felt like Atlanta because all the black people doing are here doing big things. Not all of them, but there's a lot of black people here doing big, big things. It's great. It gives Atlanta-esque, but it ain't Atlanta, y'all. We are black Americans, our culture is different. So just be prepared for that. And that's not a bad thing. It's just something to kind of rewire your mind because you'll you'll be learning English again through a different culture, essentially. We can talk for the most part, but then sometimes we might get a little bit a little bit rocky and then we'll figure it out. So that has been pretty interesting. Um what else? Um, trying to get used to the currency and trying to understand what quantifies, like what is expensive here or what's not expensive, trying to understand the true price of stuff. That was something like, of course, guys, we definitely did overpay for things. Absolutely. Am I mad about that? Not the happiest, but it's going to happen. You're moving to a new place. You have to figure out what the currency really means. Like how much should... Toilet paper really costs. Like how much should meat really cost? Just like in America, you're trying to figure out what the true price of something is so you know if it's actually you're getting a deal or if you're getting scammed. So that has been a fun experience. I think we're pretty much on the straight and narrow. A big thing for me has been because, you know, in America, we work in dividends of 10 for the most part. Every time I see a thousand rand, I don't know why that quantifies in my mind to $100, but that's essentially like $60, depending on the exchange rate. So that's been the biggest hurdle to overcome, and I don't know why my mind has created that. Nobody has ever said that a thousand rand equals a hundred dollars. My brain just feels like that's what it should be. So just prepare for you just trying to get acquainted with your area because you don't want to be like overcharged for stuff just because you're an American. You need to be mindful, you need to be looking at prices and keeping an eye out on stuff. And also, if you meet people, maybe ask them too, like if it falls into the conversation, how much certain things are. Um, what else? Um, load shedding for us where we live actually has not been an issue. So I'm very lucky to say that. The property, um, the private estate that we stay on really doesn't experience load shedding. I think they say that they experience it when it hits five to six, but we do have an inverter also. So when I say like we have not experienced load shedding, we have not experienced load shedding and they have had load shedding. So I'm very lucky for that. And also the area that we live in, I don't think has load shedding just like as much in general. So that has been good because I know y'all was on my back about the load shedding. They're like, be careful. Don't come here. We have load shedding. Everything's perfect, but the load shedding. And don't get me wrong. I know that that has serious implications on people. But luckily I have been very fortunate for my family that we have not experienced that that much. Um, we haven't experienced any water outages. Actually, the estate that we stay on has put in their own JoJo's and water filtration system. So that was actually happening when we toured this place. And then when we moved in, I think just like two weeks ago, they said that, you know, they were running the final test on it and that we're good to go. So I 
very happy. So it's been, you know, there's been some wins and there's been some losses. Money has been spent. Money has been lost. But, you know, I'm thankful because I'm here. Um, it's nice to be able to just be around people that look like me in essence. It feels really good. It feels really good to just see a culture that is very similar to ours. And as I've been here longer, I can truly say that there are a lot of similarities to America, but it's almost just like America in a twilight zone, like a whole different dimension, a different dimension of America. Um, what America could be if it was like different, if you know what I mean. If America was predominantly black, you know what I mean? If America cared about social issues, um, being here specifically with what's going on in Palestine and in Gaza has been a very um, unique experience because in America, they are under the notion that what is going on there is justified. And here, they're on the side of occupation is not justified, that what's going on there is a genocide. So it's really cool to be somewhere that shares the same views that we do because in America, they're gaslighting people. In America, they're sitting there not listening to the people, they don't care, that the people don't want what's going on, that they don't want their tax dollars going to this, that they want to cease fire, that they want these things. And America has their own agenda. Being here and knowing that our country has set the precedent for moving in the right direction to stop this humanitarian crisis is really a really cool experience. And so I'd say within this month, I've been really also just very proud of South Africa just to see how South Africa can um, rally around another country that they see as is walking down and is leading the same life that they might have experienced. It's just interesting because so has America, but America is against it. Okay, so my camera died. So yeah, no, um, I can't remember what I was talking about. However, it's been a really good process, I would say. So it's been a, I feel like this process of moving has taught us a lot and has given us the tools to be able to really be successful here. Um, we are very observant people. So we try to understand like what's going on, why it's going on and the method that's going on so that we can move through different processes quickly and efficiently. So we had to just get knocked into reality and just realize, I don't know how y'all thought you were going to plan how to live somewhere based off of your American mindset, but that is real crazy and it was never happening. But now that we have seen the light and we have had a come to Jesus moment, we are just way more prepared. Um, the stress was high in the first month. I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, this is not a channel that I'm going to lie to y'all. It was definitely high. Definitely heart beating, heart racing, really just trying to get to it. We were literally in grind mode, trying to just first things first, get a place because it was so dramatic what happened. Um, that was like the first things first. But again, we couldn't just pick anywhere. This is where we're going to live for at least this year. And for sure, I can definitely say for this year, because I believe we are going to be relocating. We like Johannesburg, really do like it, but we're going to visit a few other areas. We're going to be visiting places just to make sure because like we just moved here and we don't want to lock ourselves down to a place. That's literally the last thing we wanted to do was lock ourselves down. We're really feeling pretty free right now. Our kids are really young. So we just want to make sure that this is a city for us. And I love this city. The only thing like I really just feel like it's missing is water. Like when you look out in Johannesburg, it feels like there should be water out here. And I live near a beach. Where I'm from, the beach is like 20 minutes away. So where I grew up, I'm used to that. And I'm really just feeling like when I be out, I'd be like, you know what would be really nice laying out at the beach. But there's no beach here. Um, but there is a lot of other things here. So it's like, you know, a double-edged sword. But, you know, we're going to be spending this time trying to figure out where we want to be. And it's not like we're buying a house right away because it's also stupid. We just got here. We need to just worry about being acclimated and becoming one with the, our community. We can't be worried about, like, big, big things like that and then, like, accidentally tie ourselves down to somewhere what, that might not be serving us, if that makes sense. So, um, yeah. This month now, now that we're in month two, I'm a lot more confident. I can say I'm coming into February way more confident, 
when I'm out and about, I'm not feeling like, oh my gosh, I just don't understand. I just don't know what I'm doing. Like I have my footing. We have our schedule. We drop the babies off at school. We go to the gym. We come back. We do some work. We'll go out. We'll do different things. We have the grocery stores we like to go to. We have the malls that we like to go to. We have the areas we like to go to. We explore. And that's pretty much what we're doing. Um, so I can say that our routine is starting to come into fruition and that is beneficial for us. We function very well on a routine. If me and my husband don't have a routine, we are really just like rock on, like nothing matters. Like we are really a, I feel like for, in my opinion, we are, we're either on one side or we're drastically on the other. So we have a routine, but it's not like strict, 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 like super strict, but it is in the sense that like it helps us kind of map out our days and our weeks and what we're planning to do. So um, some great things I have learned and experienced here. I'm having a lot of fun, as you guys can see. I, I really do enjoy being here. Um, I'm very happy that we moved. There is not one day that I wish I was in America. I feel genuinely bad for the people living in America. Every time I check to see what's going on in my homeland, they're always disappointing me. So I'm very happy that we said deuces because, you know, if I would have listened to anybody else, they would have had us living in like the Northeast and try, or maybe even in California trying to make up for the fact that America is literally crumbling. So like, I'm just looking at all the turmoil and I'm like, thank God I'm out there. Thank God. That's like the last thing I got to worry about. There was a few mass shootings recently in America. And again, I am so grateful that you guys are, for the most part, are very peaceful people. Like, I actually saw South Africa on the list of the best place to live if there was a nuclear war or World War III were to break out. South Africa was on the list of like the top seven places, countries in the world. Um, what else? Now that we have come here, we have also, you know, we've gotten our helpers. We found babysitters, so now we can go out to the nightlife. So now y'all can tell me places that we should go. I like dance music, so like I'm a piano's great. I like techno, I like house, deep house. So y'all can tell me places that really could be a fun vibe for us. Where I feel like now, this month, we're gonna be truly experiencing. Like we're going to Ultra in Johannesburg in March. My birthday's also in March. So we'll be doing that. We're gonna be going to a few little parties this month. I believe we're gonna be traveling to Durban either this month or next month. And we're gonna be really getting into it. Now that we have gotten our, our stuff kind of you know settled, we need to start decorating now. We need to get a new couch. I don't like this couch. We're gonna get a leather couch because I don't know why I thought that a fabric would work with these kiddos, but it's just not working. So we're gonna do that. But it's just been a good time. So, you know, it's been a learning experience, but how do you expect to grow if you're not being put through situations that test you and test your ability to maneuver? So like, I can't come here and be comfortable. So I understand that like what's happening is what needs to happen for me to blossom into who I'm trying to be, for me to get the best out of living out of here. I need to be able to shed my skin that I had in America and really just be here and just be, be able to just know like, okay, so this is happening, but it's not always gonna be like this. You're growing through the change and change can be difficult it could be really hard for people and I typically am really good with change and I think I was but it just got overwhelming once things just started kind of like in my opinion going downhill but when, if somebody were to hear it they'd be like it really wasn't going downhill I just think you guys were caught by surprise because we were prepared but it was just like I don't know um, but I do now see the benefit of this because we become stronger we become more knowledgeable we become more confident so this has been a good first month and we're going into almost ending our second month here and I'm happy. I'm not looking at plane tickets to go back to South Carolina or Florida. I don't miss home. I miss my friends, but luckily I have great friends that plan to travel here. So it's, it's all good guys. It's really all good. Like time zone, we were jet lagged like crazy the first couple weeks, but that finally wore off too. The babies are, integrated very well they love their school i love their school i think that they are going to really see the benefits and we will see the benefits of them being around other children so yeah 
Um, here, my YouTube channel has been doing even better. I'm able to give you guys the content that I kind of wanted to do. I'm hoping to be able to do more as well, but I hope that you guys are enjoying it. Um, it seems like you are. You know, I do this for y'all. I do this for my, my black Americans out there that think that there's nothing out there, that they can't go nowhere, that this is the end all be all. I'm here to show y'all that it's not. I'm young, I'm married, I have kids. I, it's not like I am this super wealthy person. I'm a regular girl, regular, regular girl. And I just wanna show y'all that this can be done, that we can do this and that life doesn't have to be, you know, what you know in America. It doesn't have to be these things. And if you're in another place, like, it, I hope this, I hope my videos help you guys just see that the world has so much opportunity to just not single yourself out. Don't strap yourself down. Don't let nobody tie you down to the place. Just grow. And if you're able to grow, then you're able to experience new things. Um, and don't be scared of growth. Like, it definitely hurts a little bit to grow because it puts you in a, a mindset that you're just unsure. And I like certainty. I I love certainty. My moon is in Capricorn, y'all. <laughs> and my ascending is Virgo. And my rising sign, excuse me, my sun sign is Aries. So if y'all into astrology, you already know what I'm saying here is I like a good, st stable surface. And I was really like little Kim, literally just like this the whole time. But now I'm like, I, I feel I feel much more better. I feel like a ballot. I feel like not a ballerina. I feel like someone bios on the beam. Just really stable. So it works out, guys. Like that's all I'm here to say is that it works out. We're very lucky. We're very happy. We had a great holiday. We had a good new year. We have our health. We have our wellness. And just we're excited to go forward. So that is that. And so that's how my first month went, y'all. It was it was a ride, y'all. It was such a ride. Um, we were, it was like a true roller coaster. Highs and lows. But that's just life also. So if you want life just to go smooth, well, then you're just not living life. If your life is literally just like same, platonic, not like you need to do something. Because obviously you're not challenging yourself. So love this country. Love you all. I've been enjoying the food, the culture, the experiences, the scenery. It's a, this is a beautiful city. This is a beautiful city. I know everybody raves about Cape Town, but Johannesburg is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. There are views everywhere. It's just so scenic. I don't, I, I truly just think you guys are so blessed that this is your country like that. And I mean, in my country, cause I'm about to apply for residency, period. But um, yeah. I love this city. I really do. I really do love Joburg. And I can't wait to get more into the artsy, art scene, music scene, um, make some friends, and just really get more in tune with living here, if, if you catch my drift. I will be learning Zulu. I think this month we are supposed to start our classes. Let's see if it really happens, because you know things come up. But we are planning to start classes, so... You never know. Maybe I'll go on live with y'all and show you guys what I'm learning once I start. But yeah, um, right now I'm wearing this shirt. It's, isn't it so cool? Super cute shirt by Stone Man um, Clothing. And this is actually my husband's brand. So he, this is like, all oh, this is like an original. This is a ri original, what you're seeing right now. He makes digital art and he has an apparel company and he's bringing the apparel company here once we get our residency so we can he can work and like create his business. So if you like this shirt, I will drop a link below. There's other shirts online. He also has an Instagram um, and I will put the Instagram up here and below. So if you want to look at it and just engage with his content because he puts like digital art up, he's a digital artist, then you can. Um, if you want to buy something, then you can. Like, you literally don't have to, but I'm here to tell you, like, this is fire. Like, I rolled it up, but this is fire. Look at this. It's giving alien superstar. But we're not really effing with Beyonce, because she's not speaking up for Palestine. So it's not really like alien superstar. But yeah, so I love this shirt, and it has, like, the Stoneman logo on the back. So check the shirt out. And we are about to go because we just got some money. So we're about to go and go handle some business. I'm about to get my hair redyed. As you can see, my hair is growing in. I'm growing it out. 
um, but I'm still keeping it blonde for a little bit because I want my ends to be blonde. So that's that. I will do another video later on and I guess that's it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't yet, like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you later. Bye.